it is a biz it's a business thing yes yes we're creative but you have to be equally creative and business like if one overtakes the other you essentially and uh, you can't you don't function but if you're too yeah. creative and not business like you lose money or you undercharge and you devalue yourself if you're too business like you're then not creative enough to then get the business Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Jesse Nyberg podcast. Today we have on Harry Vincent, super talented uh, digital artist and designer. I'm really excited to talk to him. We're just chatting a little bit about his kind of infamous color red. So uh, let's just get right into it. How you doing, man? Uh, Good. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I've been like, since you tapped me up, I've been kind of rewatching all your existing episodes. Oh, yeah. Cool. uh, I just love the like the kind of insight you get seeing people like face to face on calls and stuff. It's quite nice. Yeah, and it's interesting because um, we were just talking about this a little bit offline. There's people that are on two sides of the spectrum. We have someone like you that is kind of like this uh, mystery person behind the <laughs> uh, kind of black letter HV and red color. That's all your kind of that's who your presence is. And then you yeah. have someone yeah. that's more maybe. Uh, a person like Elliot or someone who's all over on Twitch, like their face is very, their brand as well, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of, I feel like, yeah, you're right. There's kind of like two schools of like thought and approach when people have like, yeah, and and it literally is like the profile icon. I feel like people just see like the red and they're like, oh shit, that's me. Um, It could be an agency or something, you know? I know, yeah. Oh God, yeah. Uh, but we won't go into like the old handles that I've had to go through to then get to this one. Yeah. It's, oh man. I'll tell you what I like, The first one was, um, I had underscore creative Harry, like, cause I thought that was cool. It's hard to search for. <laughs> no. Yeah. And, uh, and it literally was just this like kind of doorway C icon. And then I was like, oh, I don't know the creative bit. It's too kind of like on the nose i guess yeah and then then that evolved to like harry vector because all i did was the vector illustrations right um and then which then got the red color i guess and then all i did was just change the c to like a v and then flip right. it and then you get the hv monogram which is now just the thing is, now. so is vincent is that your before. actual um last name Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Proper, proper birth name and all that jazz. Yeah. I mean, so you're you're taking baby steps to be a more of a individual online instead of a, a mystery man. Yeah, that's it. I think, I think, uh, yeah, we were just touching it where it's like, I guess when you start off, you're like, oh, do I have like um like a pseudonym or like a mm-hmm. do I have like a like an alias? Because I know a lot right. of designers do. Like you know, like. Uh, like I get people's like an alias, you know, like right. even I have like the permanent glue on most social yeah. medias, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I think uh, what goes into it is like, you get, I guess you, you want it to be bigger than you, don't you? It's like a, it's like a mantle or like a mask when you think, oh yeah, yeah. like this can be bigger than, or just like a, it's Harry. almost like a, like, yeah, like an alias or a, a, a character, you know, like you have your, your real name and then yeah. like you could be a, not like obviously we're not heroes but you know it's like your hero name no, you know there's Zion bruce heroes, wayne yeah. and there's batman you know his, yeah. his instagram would probably be batman not bruce wayne oh my God. yeah yeah well, i mean oh god i mean yeah batman and bruce wayne like i've always had the thing with like bat uh, bruce wayne is the mask to batman it kind of then gets flipped yeah um everything bruce wayne does is to serve batman we just have like superman where it's like Clark Kent's the person, but he's also the superpower being that's an alien. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's funny that, like, yeah, you're right. If people just kind of either be themselves. Um, I think Elliot's a good example of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and because, like, he was like, because I, I remember he kind of was like, oh, how do I, like, be more? Because we always, like, used to message. Yeah, he's a time. big, he's always told me he's, like, a big fan of yours, too. <laughs> I know it's, but he's doing great. He's basically smashed out his kind of, and again, he's, I think he's a good example of where being yourself is like a niche the, too and everything. Yeah. It's like the, um, the why people follow him is because it has his tone of voice and yeah. it has, and you, and it bleeds through everything that he does. He has a, right. You read the, 
the um <laughs> like jokes or whatever in the yeah. you, you imagine him writing it and being like very sarcastic about it and like yeah. rather than if you see a random poster you may just read it it may not come across on how the person designed it wanted you to read it right you don't know if it's satire yeah, yeah. or serious or or mean no, or whatever exactly. they're going for yeah he and i yeah like i said he kind of yeah he does that is that, is that there's that tone of voice and tone behind it where you like that's like a business card joke like mm -hmm. and it's great to see you know him become that and all this all the cool shit that he's done with like case to fire mm -hmm. um and like you know even just little gifts in his twitch stream I, I tuned in the other day um because i had one of my stuff exhibited in sydney obviously i yeah. can't be there it was like a, it was one of my um seven deadly sin stickers we just made it massive like into like, a print basically yeah and um but they were just going to chuck it because it's like virtually unusable and i was like but give it to Elliot. he's in like sydney so then um and he went and saw it and yeah basically i went and logged in on his stream created an account i said i kind of hijacked the stream a bit and said hey do you want a free print and he was just like um yeah and yeah, and he basically was like, oh my God, I'm getting a free print, like yeah. one, one and a half meter like sticker thing. That's um, funny. So Good yeah, it's just like, I gotta go, cool. I'm gonna go pick this up at the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were so just I, gonna uh, throw your stuff away? Out. That's what they do? They just get, they just throw it away after? Uh, it, yeah, well, I think because it was a sticker, because um, it was um, Alana, she did her own um, exhibition that was called Glib. It was all, like this terminology of like being kind of like, like lazy and like sloppy or like glib has is like an aussie kind of term mm -hmm. and um i was like well what's so lazy is just to repurpose and is this an artwork like that's lazy yeah. so that's um, like it. that's a really <laughs> smart way to go about it and you yeah. already had didn't have to do any extra work legit like i think all i did was just outlined everything as it was and just made it bigger yeah um but yeah like yeah it was just a big vinyl sticker so essentially you can only really use it about once or twice so it's all rolled mm. up and back now um but yeah i might have picked it up i'll have to have a look in on that if they've picked it up or not but yeah. yeah that's cool yeah like i uh it must be pretty like exciting to get some stuff like in a uh, gallery or whatever like that yeah yeah it is i mean i've always liked um i think a lot of, of what i've done has been very small scale or like digital mm -hmm. um but to then have something that was like big or in person and obviously i couldn't see it but it was kind of cool to see something like that at that scale. I mean, I recently tapped into doing like the TV mock-ups and stuff or like things yeah. on like existing devices just to kind of see how like the outline style can live in different mediums rather than just being like a poster with a fake texture on it. Right. Um, do I push it further and have it on TVs or distorted or is it painted? I mean, I've just bought like, uh, like this, like a pen like marker pen set like, like you oh know, yeah did you just do it did you them. is that just a, a um like a uh what do you call it oem red or um, did you like get that hex code oh, no, like yeah, pantone or something do, yeah they don't do the kind of calder red that i use yeah, yeah. like um, it was just red red but i was like that's fine um, yeah yeah this is that because everyone asks like is it orange or red and i'm always it's red but how I describe it, I guess, is like, you know, like, I guess you'd say tail lights, but like the headlights of a car, mm -hmm. like it's that red where it's not just kind of like a post box or like a standard red. It's that bit of like energy or lightness to it. Um, mm. Yeah, like a like a um, it's like a like a nuclear reactor, like the heat yes, coming yeah, off of it, that or something. molten, like yeah. Um, and the main reason for that was because you can then put black on it and it's legible um which funny enough coke just rebranded their coke zero and it's black text on red and i was like shit like that's me with the with the red um uh I, you make a good point about it being it it's a i have a problem sometimes where i really like a color but it doesn't work on the inverse you know uh you right, can yeah. use it on top of the white or on top of the black but putting the black or white on it kind of has that you know visual vibration or whatever you want to call it and it just yeah, kind of like yeah. you don't want to look at it it's really ugly but you you've nah. been able to it's like it could work as a negative you know yeah exactly i think and i can't remember like because basically you can get there's like 
neon paper stocks and you can get like green, yellow, orange, and pink. And they also sometimes do a red. And, and it's like a seeing, construction paper type stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think like awesome merch do it. I remember looking and they do a red and I was like, Ooh, that's not because red is normally dull. Like I think everyone's so used to kind of like, uh, like fire hydrant or something. Yeah. 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 And it's just a bit like, eh. well, whereas like I said, yeah, you're right. Where it needs to work on the inverse where you can have, so it's like a middle tone. You can have black and or white on top. Yeah. And it still works. Um, and yeah, I've just always liked that kind of, and it's weird how I just, cause that was when I did the, when I did the, I guess, horribly good idea of posting every single day for about nine months, I was like, okay, but the rule is whatever it is, it has to have written it like, mm -hmm. and this specific tone. And you never really, um, um, spoke to it. People just started to notice kind of, right? No. Yeah. I, and it was, that was literally the rule. Like I went through like using kind of like free stock images and like different mock-ups and stuff and trying. Yeah. It's hard out. to do the illustration from scratch every day, I bet. <laughs> oh yeah. It, oh yeah. Like and that was the first hurdle. I was like, okay, I want to post every day because that was the, was the way of uh, getting, you know, a big, a big audience and, mm -hmm. and also just trying shout and working out what my thresholds were um and yeah like it was like oh, but i can't do an illustration every day because it would literally kill me um, yeah and yeah it was it was the case of right some will do illustrations of some will just use stock imagery and put a sticker on it and i guess it and literally and this like this is like yeah 20 2019 now yeah like early 2019 um yeah you're doing a lot more of the um on black too Back yes oh yeah that was yeah because then the second instagram allowed you to do the whole blackout theme i was like oh, perfect. Yeah, um, yeah but yeah the isolated on black and i think it just worked on websites as well um mm -hmm. and yeah like the whole kind of asset on a black background it was just nice and clean and you could then swipe and do the, the details and stuff um but yeah it was that kind of and that's essentially because a lot of that came that posting every day a lot of it came just from frustration really i was like in a place where uh i was at a really nice agency but i wanted you know like more as as you do as you, yeah. when you're kind of this age was that in um, peril or whatever yes i, I was, was looking yeah, on your site guys, shout out to them mm -hmm. um learned a lot like how to present and market and like public speaking which i was never never yeah. good that we used to do, like sharing sessions every friday it was quite sick and um like little uh yeah, little, little reviews yeah. or whatever and whatnot yeah like people would share like personal stuff or like here's what went on um but basically because of the posting every day that since you got the following up and that's when all these you know, dms and like emails started coming in mm. and i think i think the one was like 30 seconds to mars like i was like wait like like jared p yeah jared p like me see me yeah. Yeah, yeah and he's like yeah and i was like what like, what? And you're just and then, at work, um, like seeing the email or whatever, like holy oh shit! Oh god, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, uh, it was actually on Dribble actually. Um, oh, that's so random. Yeah. I don't ever hear anyone get stuff from Dribble. Oh, yeah, I actually, it depends, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It was one of the um, the like actual um, head. Uh, I don't know what's that? But yeah, it was the. I can't really say. I guess um, it just reached out, and then yeah, that turned into, and that was kind of like the main clincher. I think that was like a. Oh wow! Okay, if I can do this and get noticed, like you know, that's kind of a cool thing, you know, to get noticed for stuff that's mine and has my kind of voice and kind of tone to it and aesthetic, I guess. And um, and it very quickly became other people that started doing kind of you know like oh like I mean Ollie Sykes was like and the bit like I was like whoa like getting a follow having yeah. messages, and I was just like. Okay, like this is a thing then, um, because I, previously I would just, you know, I was the only intent was to just, uh, I was just bored, you know, and uh, and yeah, to it's get like a blog kind of or whatever in the beginning, you know. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was just kind of just to fill the time, and it essentially became a machine in and of itself. And then, like I said, it got to a point where I was like, okay, well, I'm getting all these kind of uh, you know, inquiries and stuff from like cool things could I do it full time? And then that's what essentially led up to February last year 
was then that was the first month of freelance for me which is you know over a year ago now a perfect um, timing man for that. yeah like, uh, i mean perfect or not perfect depending on what's think, going on well, yeah i was i think at the time i was like oh no because there was lots of things in the pipeline that were going to happen a lot of it was based on flying out to in like, events and stuff but events and like um specifically you know coming over to where you are man hoping or hopping over the pond um, yeah working closely with some clients and then it didn't happen and i was like but i think in hindsight probably was better because i was able to kind of get a firm foothold of what freelance was like here without moving Um, all around and everything yeah exactly and like things like contract paperwork and stuff um and getting all my like insurance stuff sorted and very quickly he started having all these small projects and inquiries and you know, doing stuff for drop deads and stuff. Mm-hmm. And that was like early days. And to think of where I am now versus a year ago is just really nice. Like uh, to, to have pulled through, a, I guess, a year one in a pandemic that where my main clients that do gigs aren't doing gigs. Now you can kind of do, you, you feel like now you I can handle do, anything, yeah. right? Yeah. And I, it was, it's been like a really good, like um, really kind of, progressive year like i've learned so much just in year one and i'm just, just kind of excited now to go into year two now i mean it's because i always based it on tax year because it was just like tax year now yeah um you have to grown up about that uh did you uh, um I, is that what made you i guess then leave the agency was just that you could like have you always wanted to do like freelance but you just were no, like scared yeah, of the no, security or whatever yeah basically it was yeah, I, I, there wasn't. Uh, yeah, a bit of both. Like I think it was because I could. I think I was mm-hmm. realizing that I was like, oh, okay, could I do this all time? And I think whilst being, you know, at home, really, it was like it's not as big of a risk. And so therefore, it was kind of, you know, it's like, a, okay, well, if it messes up, I can then just get another job again. And right. luckily, it hasn't yet. <laughs> um you know like it's been all kind of i think this this first part of this year like 2021 it's been very chocker like i've had loads of new things i've met loads of new people had loads of like really cool conversations about stuff it's made me realize okay i've done something right then if i'm Mm -hmm. still able to like still pay for stuff and exist and eat um, a lot of your clients like a uh kind of different all the time or ongoing relationships that you do work for every month maybe Sure. Yeah. I, I got to a point where I did have that. Um, I kind of have like a little bit of both, maybe a little bit of both. Like it's like a two pronged approach where I have people that just come to me for me, like they can see my site, see my like social profiles or something and they, they scout want your me style or whatever. Me. Yeah. And then I also then have kind of like, I guess someone in the background is of people that I know that regularly tap me up like um, a lot of like agencies I work with quite closely just on really cool campaigns really and a lot of cool like um, where you're more working in their brand guidelines and stuff right yeah yeah and like through their processes so I kind of like having the balance of both because one's more regular than the other Mm -hmm. Um, and it's it was it was because early days I didn't I was kind of hoping and praying that I was going to get an email from a band every week and it didn't happen yeah and so i mean well of course it didn't happen (laughs) but (laughs) yeah i think it was the case of i i think i realized quite early on that i couldn't keep relying on that flow of it i needed to make my own and tap up people that already knew and find also new contacts and that's exactly what i've done and build some longer term relationships and things yeah it's been really nice and even you know it's funny how i think even though we're like, like less connected, I think I've spoke to and had loads more video calls than I think I ever would have, would have. And, yeah, and that's allowed man. the branch to uh, the tree of my kind of contacts to be a lot more bigger and varied. And it's been even really talking nice. with you and like um, some of those people in the Twitter chat that were in like, <laughs> yeah. and just yeah. Instagram and stuff. Like, I, I don't know. I, I kind of, like I'm very grateful for social media, but I hate it at the same time. But like yes. without the pandemic, I don't think I would have started the channel, which then made mm. me realize, oh, I want to do a podcast too, which then made yeah. me realize, 
well, fuck, I got to get these people to like respect me. So they'll come on, which yeah. then made me yeah. reach out to people more, you know, and be more social on the social media because I used to just, you know, post whenever I wanted, didn't yep. really like look into how these things work and how to grow them and then sit there and wonder how come I'm not on the level as these other people. Yeah. And I realized, yeah. oh, it's because you don't deserve to be. You're not Believe actually it. doing it the right way. And uh, I feel a lot more disconnected in a way from some of my uh, IRL friends or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But meeting yeah. people like I don't think it's cool to talk to someone like you and or like oh. um, Jack uh, Skintress yeah. or whatever, like yeah, from different yeah. countries and uh, feel like we're all just kind of the same person living in different parts of the world, you no, know? It, it, that is exactly, yeah. I think what I think I found uh, similar to you where it's like, uh, I think Twitter has been a very interesting place, like back in the last year yeah. going into this year, just for some reason, I don't know what it was, but it just felt more active. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I only recently, cause I've always had it, but I never really went into it. I, I think, used to just use it in high school for whatever. <laughs> nah, yeah. I didn't, I, it was like, so it's like LinkedIn. I just don't use, I try and I try to, but it doesn't really suit, I guess what I'm about really. Or whereas I think Twitter, you, you're right. Like all the little group chats and things that we're in or yeah. um, they're really, I even discord, man. Like I didn't know what it was like last year. And yeah, I only knew it for I've, gaming. I didn't know you could create like nah, design chats I didn't know and you stuff. Could do all this. Like, yeah. Nah, I was like, okay. So I'm like, I'm a part of quite a few of those now. I'm like, you're one, I guess the one I mean, Dan set up, um, uh, which we're not that active in apologies, but we've got one. <laughs> um, and yeah, and there's loads of like NFT ones, which I'm just a bit like. Those uh, ones are fucked, I'm man. Like, yeah, I'm you try to go ones. in there and it's like 30% like people spamming. The other 70% yeah. are like, yo, can you get me on foundation? <laughs> yes. Uh, or, or like. Yeah, the, there's a couple of ones I want, like, and also part of them, um, the Healer Deal one, which is really nice. Like, mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. That's from like a uh, Malavida, yeah, like uh, at least oh, one. The, um, uh, she does all the crazy, like, texture, yeah, like marble stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, super that's cool. It. Um, so yeah, it's been nice. I think I also did a um, like a, a collective hope they're called thing and that um, uh, that was that can they connected me with um christian who's oh no he's gonna bug me if i don't know his handle uh because yeah, i've followed we'll him for a while. whatever it is yeah it's um his thing is oh no hang on yeah we can get it he deserves it yeah and i'll throw up a screenshot somewhere in the middle here on the screen okay Oh yeah, it's um C it's at C dot I C B. He's got like 40k followers. Like we've been following each other for a while. And then yeah. you know, we just never we just well, and then that that little project that we did, it was just coming up with like using we had to use um Excel to create artwork. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you were oh, like limit cool. like the pixels and stuff and adding in yeah. images. Um and yeah, like um I'll just copy it into here do you want me to just copy it into this yeah right. you can do it after oh, wow. too i'll save it whatever yeah okay so you want to okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, real quick uh maybe um can you uh close whatever you open because it made you all white okay yeah okay. yeah so. cool cool <laughs> oh my yeah the glass <laughs> so yeah so uh chris it was named christian yeah christian yeah um and like it was just kind of nice because we had a call and we're like it's funny but we're all just in the same scenario where we're like less connected, like you said before, right. like actual family and friends that are like an hour drive max away or less than that. And yet we're talking to people completely other side of the world, like every day. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it was kind of nice. And we were both like, this was really cool just to even, because we, like we followed each other for a while, but we hadn't really talked or yeah, there's like a person behind the profile picture. Mm -hmm. And uh it was just kind of cool. We're, the, we're just riffing on the same kind of topics, mm -hmm. um, like what thing, like the world, world going to shit and like environmental yeah. stuff and like is NFT still bad kind of thing. And so it was just kind of nice. And it was that level of humanity, which I think we've all been lacking this past year, I think. Yeah. Um, but we, I guess we've been able to find it by other means um, as well. And like, and like you said, like if the pandemic happened and you're not starting this, you know, like going after the, 
this podcast and stuff like it's always interesting to have that kind of uh this time because we're not going to get anything like this again i don't think well hopefully yeah um and if we're lucky enough to still be around i think a lot of people had really positive career changes well, they've tried mm-hmm. shit they would never have or done they before. didn't think it was but it was you ah, know it's like yeah. a blessing in disguise type of thing. yeah exactly like um one of my, my my like irl friends um lucy she started up she was these really cool like illustrations and she started up her own like um she called it peaches cult we'll throw up that on there um and we do a little shout out but yeah she does these really cool like really cute like kawaii like frogs and stuff yeah and she only did like keychains and stuff. And then she suddenly just designed this frog cushion and people just loved it. And again, the pandemic kind of forwarded that time of going, well, yeah, fuck it, try it. And she did a massive uh-huh. burnout of shit. She just drops like every couple of weeks and just sells out in like a minute each time. That's dope. And it's awesome. It's so good to see like people trying stuff and using this time and like, you know, because it's been such a struggle, you know, like a lot of people have lost their whole livelihoods and yet, a lot of us is fortunate enough just to be around still and yeah. we kind of have used it um whilst despite how kind of crap it's been um so yeah it can bring this uncertainty can bring up you know these rough decisions you know i think when yeah. this ends there's gonna be loads of people going on holidays and and, and doing stuff that they've never done before because they've had 18 months to well that's to like um not being able to there is like some kind of it's kind of corny but some quote i heard it was something like the only difference between a rock and a diamond is pressure or something like yeah, that yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. and it's enough. like some people enough you can like yeah press. enough pressure whatever <laughs> and you know uh you can take this stuff and the things going on which seems like in uh in the good side is we're on the la- latter half of it but um, you can take these things going on, whether it's um social justice issues hmm. like uh, a pandemic, people just yeah. overall being idiots in the world, and you could feel bad for yourself and feel hopeless and feel like you, whatever you're gonna do isn't gonna fix it, or you can take that and spin it into gasoline for like yeah. your vehicle of choice and just try to push it and like benefit yeah. from this time, you know? Yeah, it does, and it takes a lot of effort, you know. Like I think, I think everyone's to start to varying degrees have had um uh like issues that they've never been able they've never had before you mm-hmm. know like isolation and like being cut off and self-discipline too you gotta be yeah and that limitation of just like having no options or no no kind of things to look forward to you know in like months or even a year now it does have a toll on you because then I guess you question why you do things like why are you breaking your back like and a lot of people then have not had the facilities like at home you know like developing all these kind of like you know sitting on the edge of their bed doing their work like there's yeah. no separation from enjoy enjoyment and work and right like, you need a dedicated space you know yeah it does and like i said i'm i'm, I'm kind of fortunate that uh august last year uh the lovely pool um yeah tell me about that space i I wanted to ask you about it so i keep saying this to him like i said that dude literally saved my life i couldn't work from home like i was struggling so bad um even though i had my own like desk you know i had all the things there for some reason i just could didn't have that headspace Mm -hmm. i had the physical space but the headspace just wasn't working and i think it was you know i think a lot of people have probably had the same effect where that commute Yes, it's long and hard, but it gets you out of the house and it gets you, you have like fresh clothes on and you, you know, you, you make an effort with the appearance. It just makes you feel a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, and discovering this place and having this place since August has just been insanely helpful. It's like literally 20 minutes away from my home. Yeah. And that's and, a good amount where you don't hate yourself driving there, you know? No, exactly. I mean, I've always, I've contemplated walking. It's only about it's like an hour and a bit walk. Um, so like you know get my steps in or something but yeah it's awesome man like um uh, could i can i show hang on i could let me turn the camera around a little bit it's also if you want to um you could, you could send me a little video after too if you want okay yeah okay that might be better actually <laughs> sorry whatever you want you um, can just do a little iphone tour <laughs> yeah i can yeah um uh, yeah that's it actually that's a better idea man 
I always get so like, yes, yeah, just do that, and then actually, it's the best I do. Uh, well, yeah, we got the luxury of um, not being live, you know. So we got post oh post production stuff. If he was, so, this would be a nightmare with me because <laughs> of just I'm so like, yeah, I'll just do. It. Oh shit, come on. Yeah, I do um, that all the time. Like, uh, I have a great idea. Oh fuck, I just yeah. like I, I've I've gotten up before to adjust the adjust my camera and shit just yeah. starts like falling and my lights and everything. Oh, I'm no. like fuck, fuck. <laughs> freaking out but yeah how does that um, work like does um you said yeah. paul or or whoever he yeah. he owns the the um the ba- uh, it's called the, bakery, the building yeah. or whatever yeah. but yeah and you guys all so just like, like yeah. paid us to work there or something or yeah basically yeah we this is like this stuff we kind of rent a desk but you, just, you get more than a desk man you get like your own locker like we have we've had uh, ever since i've been here we've had like these kind of like plastic you know screens mm-hmm. in between each desk so therefore it's kind of COVID safe, whereas if one, you know, coughing or whatever, it's fine. Yeah. But not many people have been in because um because of the certain restrictions, a lot of people have just had to isolate and stuff. So for a good chunk of it, for about three months, it was just me in this like oh, really? office. It's like I was like, Is it kind of open to room. whoever wants to like apply or sign up or whatever it is? Yeah, yeah. Like I think because currently there's a lot of spaces, obviously, because no one's have really been in but um yeah it's got i think now we've got capacity for about 12 to 14 people massive desk spaces and is everyone like uh i don't know like a creative or designer or something yes like yeah, yeah there's there's photographers designers p- uh, project managers cool. um everyone uh, advertisement even advertisement and stuff um but yeah honestly man it's like it feels like a london agency if you've ever been to one um mm-hmm. It's got that vibe to it, except, you know, it's you got get to work on your own stuff. It's so. a work. Yeah. Everyone's freelance, which yeah. is the best part. Um, and it's been really nice. Like, I've, you know, met some cool people in here um, and it's just been nice, like wonderful heating. Like, it's great. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I feel so privileged to even just have it. Like I said, it's like it was a genuine uh, game changer for me. I think I look at my cash flow graph because you're quite out of those now. Yeah. And it was like red. And he's doing this and then august comes around and it's just been green since that's interesting and- because you would think uh you have to also factor in you know you're paying x amount of money to be in here yeah. but it's still yeah. uh it's still netting out as a as a win yeah. because you're getting more done or getting more clients or whatever exactly and that that's exactly it, it was like it's like an investment really um mm-hmm. and like i said yeah don't it's can't believe it's almost going to be a year soon and uh yeah, mental. But like, it's so so helped me, and and like I said, I think it was just mainly the structure and the the kind of place that it is. Because like I said, there's there's everything you want here. Um, and like I said, unfortunate enough to even find it. There's other like hot desking type places, but here it feels like you, it's like yours. If that makes right. sense. Like it's not just a desk you're occupying. It's like your space. Yeah, and you and can think- kind of do what you want with it yeah like and there's 24 7 access like i've i mean i'm here on a sunday night at nine are the um are the uh uh like the hardware and stuff is it that is it the the buildings or do you have your own computer and stuff there yeah i've got yeah i've got my own mac on my i just leave my monitor here and we have like we have key form and stuff um so do you have something at home to work on Um, too though or or not at all I was a sorry broke up. Uh, do you um do you have any computer at home to work on also or no? Uh, no, no. I literally just have my. I just got myself the new M1 Mac um, laptop with with the um with my kind of business stuff. Um, oh, cool. And yeah, I literally just unplug that, take that home, and I've got my keyboard and stuff and graphics tablet and stuff. So yeah, yeah that shit's small enough, huh? You just throw it in a backpack or something. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Literally, just throw it in my kind of tote bag and go home. That's it. That's I would it. have to be carrying around this fucking <laughs> twenty pound like PC or whatever. Just oh. like like, an, and I have I like think- two mon. My shit's so like, I used to be a very mobile, you know, working off my Mac all the time, but. Now it's like my thing is like set up. Like, don't even ask me to move my monitor or anything because no. everything's like cord controlled and like lights yeah, and yeah. stuff. You know. Oh, uh, I think I, I think that's just the. I think when you get like a map, but that is literally you are mobile all the time. Like, um, yeah, it's kind of just one of those things where you just accept that you're working light all the time. Yeah, um, I'm looking, looking to get a laptop, mobile. but I, it's like yeah. Uh, now that I. 
I don't, I, I love Mac. I, I have nothing against it anymore, but now yeah. that I realize like the amount of like the power I can get out of a, not being a Mac, the one yeah. issue though is it's kind of hard to find a cool uh, a Windows laptop. I don't like the well, laptops that much, but yes, we'll see. yeah, we'll see. I've heard from a lot of people in the Discord and stuff that like they're just expensive for what they are, yeah, and they don't get necessarily get the spec as well. Um, but yeah, no, I've I've been Mac since sixth form, really. Like it's just the way. I mean, the, I think the coolest thing is like when I finish a PSD, I just didn't airdrop it to my phone, and post it. That's it, done. Mm-hmm. And I think it's that interconnectivity and user interface i think people are so used to now yeah um and this is what we kind of you know do <laughs> i know man if uh if uh microsoft could figure out some type of airdrop or some type of i message it'd be over for, yeah it'd be over for Literally, the yeah because i'll always rock an iphone no matter what happens yeah. like yeah i'm a pc now but i love the iphone you know yeah i know yeah i mean i somehow survived on an iphone 6 until last year i don't know how I just did. Yeah, and I was I like that. Just too. got do one. Yeah, because you know they obviously they intentionally make them shit. They yeah. they look. Yeah. They were fined what like 150 mil the other year, and nothing happens. They just yeah. like they literally make them slower, and yet we still you know everyone buys the new one each year, year on year, year. Apple on year. really is the the perfect example of how shitty a company can be, and how still like yeah they give you they make you feel like well fuck like this is i gotta have it you know this is all yeah, i've ever like yeah. they're a perfect example of like a monopoly or whatever you want to call it yeah exactly like it, it was they're like the they like the it's an abusive relationship almost you know? yeah oh my god but they're, they're, they're like the covert side of consumerism that i think everyone doesn't they're not as finely attuned to like we've wised up to like mcdonald's and stuff like and food and things that are like cheap and have stuff like that but then we haven't but they're the other they're the flip side of that where it's they they make a product that you always will want even if it may be on paper it's just worse yeah like getting rid of the display ports and stuff and i have to have all these dongles uh and like like i said yeah, and like, they swing it as like it looks cleaner though you know cleaner, don't know. you don't need these ports like yeah dude what am i gonna do with my hard drive then man like yeah um and yeah they it's, but then they all again. This is one they have fun the balance of like innovating, and then it's getting a new product out. I mean, like the, I think for me, if they change the shape of something, it means not much has changed. Mm-hmm. So like with the recent iPhone, they just looks completely different, doesn't it? But yeah, I like it though. Change hardware wise, right? Like yeah, but yeah, I don't know, and and the whole their their um. Their like desktop map that they brought out the most expensive one. It has like no wheels and it just rolls freely. The one that looks like a cheese grater. Yes, that one. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Dude, oh I, I went on their site one day to like max out the Mac Pro like specs. And it was like sixty thousand dollars if you max Ooh. out everything. It's like and it's like one terabyte uh RAM or some stupid yeah. shit. Like you could literally get about three really good, like yeah, like custom built PCs for that, like. Nah, like you can get like twenty, you know. So twenty, like <laughs> yeah. You can max out three and just have them as in your different, like just have one for rendering, one for like yeah. Like, so you're doing all these things at once. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah, it's meant to win it. But like I said, it's that it's that kudos that the brand has, and it's almost a value in of itself, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, like a status or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I do really like the. um Trying to get the case off, but I can't. But I do like the uh, blue color. That's why I got the. Yeah, this that one. one's cool. Yeah, because yeah. like I always like I don't know like something about it always felt boring, and then the the ones that were colored were always like the cheap version, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the five like, C. Remember yeah. that? Like. Yeah, yeah everyone yeah. had those in like when I was in high school. Like they were like shit, you know, and they were all like yeah. the pastel, like Easter colors or whatever. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, like I'm, but then you inevitably just slap a case on it anyway. Like I've got the, um, like the D brand, like teardown one. So it looks like, oh, it's that's naked. cool. What, what, it's where'd like, you get that? Um, that like, is that an Apple case? It's like, or it's no, no, brand? it's for their, their D brand. It's called like D-brand? a teardown case. They yeah, do, it's um, supposed to look like it's like the CPU in there and everything. 
Yeah, but it's like yeah. the exact inside of it, but they're hard as shit. So um, I've dope. dropped it so many times. But yeah, yeah, I used to rock uh, no case, and then I realized like um, it's not very smart, you know. But sometimes <laughs> I take it out, you know, just to be like, oh, it's smooth, you know, or whatever. Then I'm yeah. like, All right, I gotta put it back in before I fucking throw this <laughs> on the ground somehow. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame it's like that, but like I said, they're like they're like virtually a grand now. I don't know how that converts to the US, but like right, yeah, nine hundred quid for a phone. Like, I mean, I remember that I, the reason why I had the six for so long was every year I was like, right, I don't want a new one, no. And like two, like last year I was like, right, do I spend like seven hundred quid, which what the difference was on a new phone, yeah, or do I get? a pretty fucking decent vinyl player and audio set. And I was like, which one's going to go out of date quicker? The phone. So I just right. get, got myself a vinyl player, all the That's kit. That's cool. All what did you get? What kind of setup? Uh, it's like an, uh, basically just like, it's an Audio Technica kind of uh, player. Is it LP120? Got... Uh, oh man, I a don't direct know. drive one? Uh, Is it this? I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally like that. Exactly, yeah, yeah. 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 Not those stupid suitcases, no, 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 like... Oh, that Crosley yeah. bullshit? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah when I got, got this, it was, like, a big improvement because it has the, um, uh, the, uh, shock, like, it on okay. the feet. So, you know, you can walk okay. around and, like, yeah, if someone's no, yeah. dancing or anything, yeah, it doesn't skip the record. The yeah, yeah. 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 It's um, cool, though. Yeah, I love, I love having my analog, like, music set up because, like, uh, yeah. with digital, sometimes I, like, um what's the word like i guess for lack of a better word like you don't i don't appreciate it as much it's so easy to just like yeah, skip right. around and throw on playlists sometimes i'll yeah. go here i'll get a record and i'll um i'll listen to it all the way and i won't be working or anything while i do it i'll uh, just do yeah. it like by itself you know yeah exactly yeah. i mean it sounds so like aloof but like yes it sounds better but it generally does because you i think you're right you kind of value the presence of the sound more yeah, like when yeah. you're just shuffling, you're like, I skip, skip, skip. And as a designer, then, I think everyone appreciates like the packaging and everything. Yeah, oh my right? God. I mean, like, so like Architects, like new album, banging album, went straight to UK number yeah. one. They did like 20 color variants. They're like hardcore, the right? Or metalcore or something? Yeah, like, oh yeah. my God. It was so sick, man. Like, That's dope. Yeah. Yeah, and like, because they approached me to the, the posters for them, just laying them out. And like Dan reached out to me, Dan so the the do behind them and uh it was just cool to see that and you know like i think you're right it's the packaging like and there's designers and then probably one of our mates has done it as well mm -hmm. i mean like um dan barker always does you know has always got he's got loads of covers under his belt now yeah um and i'd love one day to get those like in person you know i mean I've, what do you like to ones, listen to like mostly like what kind of music oh so like I've changed the, yeah, it depends what I'm doing, but like my go-to really is kind of like, I kind of like new metal, like a lot, mm -hmm. just because I don't know, they just, they tend to just kind of gritty and hard. Like when I'm churning away something, that's what's in my yeah. head, in my ears. But most of the time, like in the office, it would just slap on like, just kind of more chilled kind of Mac Miller. Yeah, uh, yeah kind of stuff where it's like nice but just not as heavy right um i feel that yeah, way with like i listen to a lot of like hardcore and punk and some metal and stuff yeah. but when i work i gravitate more towards like the uh jazz and instrumentals and hip-hop and stuff you know because okay. it's like more yeah. uh, it feels like it's better suited for background music you know yes yeah yeah right like less lyrics more kind of just vibes abstract. or whatever <laughs> yeah 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 and like, I, like touching on violence, like I managed to get like an original Star Wars 1977 soundtrack off That's eBay dope. for like 10 quid and had the Japanese art like slip. Oh, I love those with the thing on the left side, right? Like yeah. The yeah. And I was like, cause everything else is the same. It's just the inner sleeve is Japanese. Yeah. And I put it on, just start crying. Like Leia's theme came on and I'm like just crying like this pure serenity like yeah and that's exactly what it is um i'll show like that. you something that you would think is cool um, also i'm digging the top man what's that this is a uh oh no, harley, davidson, sure. harley davidson yeah yeah, yeah. so 
This this I talked about this on the last podcast. This is like Tom Mish's album. It's called okay. uh, What Kind of Music. It's produced by yeah. Blue Note. But what's cool about it is you see like this white text. Yeah. This is actually how the cover looks, but it's just on the thing, you know? Oh, like a slip. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. And like yeah. the inside has like a, I really like stuff like this because the inside also has um, like a kind of booklet where each track has its own like cover art almost, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. It's kind of like the added detail and like going in, you know. Yeah, it'd be fun to work on that stuff. I've never worked on a, I've worked on cover art, but never a full on like gatefold LP or anything. Oh, like yeah, that. no. I, I managed to score. Um, oh, I'm so bad with references. Oh, my God. Uh, what's, what's the Kanye album, The Red Bomb with the. Uh, my Dark Twisted Fantasy. Yeah, uh, I scored like the. Um, like the vinyl of that and right. you get all the different variants of oh yeah uh-huh. there's a little window um because yeah. i think that was done by virgil abloh as well and like and the typography is all gold leaf and yeah. it was a good 60 quid but i was like yeah oh. but you get three lps of it mm-hmm. and it's insane like so good yeah that i mean i love like I, I go to the sometimes i go to the flea markets and the or the thrift stores and I'll look for like some gems, not only musically, but mm. if it's cheap enough and I just like the art, I'll just buy it. You know? Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, hopefully I, I like the yeah. music too. But yeah, there's a small, there's a little town called in near me called Battlesbridge and they have like basically, it's like an auction town. It's That's like, like such a badass mill. name for a city. Oh, <laughs> I, I mean, it opens up soon, but I, oh my God, like I just love going there. Like, could you yeah. find such cool shit? Like, I found this red glass skull. So me, um, yeah, and it's now just a lampshade. I could just put got an IKEA bulb underneath it. Oh, dope! And that's a lampshade now. Um, yeah, at home. So that's cool. <laughs> um, one thing I wanted to ask you about that I didn't quite get to yet is uh, yeah. what? Uh, how did you get connected with uh, Dan Dan Barkle, and mm. what do you think? Um, like, why do you think that relationship like blossomed? so much yeah uh, so basically i mean d- he the dude is exactly where you know i, I remember when I, I basically just kept following him on instagram one day that mm-hmm. was it and i think i basically was like, oh my god like i wish i could be dan like in, in <laughs> realizing that you know the, the experience difference i was like, i'm okay right i'm early days but if i could get to a point where you know because he literally like inspired a lot of stuff you know dang dan comes before harry like right um and yeah just seeing it and being like whoa like he's freelance oh my god he's doing all these like march and album covers oh my god and yeah we i think all it was was we ended up just kind of actually talking like actually messaging like engaging a lot and then get to a point where we then it just came out of dms and into other stuff and we just started just talking more. Um, mm-hmm. We did a lot of like, he, like my, my, he sent me his contract, which I then made into my contract, which I then gave to everyone else. Yeah, that was, like, that was cool. That was inspiration for me to do. And then it goes to me to really? want to make that yeah. video and explain some of but, that stuff more. Yeah, that's exactly it. And that's exactly how it should be. We should like, it's that openness and uh, that giving everyone that level playing field. Mm-hmm. And we just, basically end up to, and we had, you know, like similar clients as well, eventually, like, and which is sick. And, um, and yeah, we just ended up just talking more. And then, and it was that we just uh, basically off, off social just ended up just kind of, you know, you know, having calls and stuff. And this is really nice. Cause it's like, someone's like, shit, like, this is someone that's like, uh, like three years mm-hmm. ahead of me in a nice way. And, yeah. um, and it's just kind of nice to see that like they also are human and they also like have you know similar problems and yeah because he's also like shit. a kind of mystery uh mystery yeah it is head. it is yeah um but that's the thing I th- and, I th- and it's things like you know discord and like um the twitter group chats and stuff and i think that's only going to get better the more transparent we are with each other i think the more you know i guess power we will have when mm-hmm when someone's like, you know, someone that's inexperienced is getting screwed over basically, 
you know, because we've all been there, right? We've all been yeah. in that situation where we knew we think 50 quid or dollars is enough, but it isn't. And you only know that by talking to your fellow, like, and then you're, when you're selling yourself yeah. short, always also you are, um, devaluing the average cost of what someone yeah. assumes something should cost, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. And I think having all, you know, and like I said, I think Twitter's been a great space for that. Like, everyone's been like, you know, so open and so like, mm -hmm. this is what this is cost. I mean, and it's sometimes fu like funny. We all like, yeah, guys, don't do this. Like, we, yeah. it's like it brought back a sense of spirit that I think has been lost for a while. Like I haven't felt this kind of integrated as a designer like ever. Um, yeah, I, I, I uh, it, we, we spoke about it earlier, but I don't have a lot of friends that are in real life that mm. uh, I've always, I can, they, they always like, you know, I'm the designer of the, that, the right yeah the people i know so they always yeah. just say wow this is cool you know like that they don't know how to like it's not like i can learn from them and and vice versa no. i have a few yeah. friends but it's crazy to see like you're just it's all relevance like you're just the cool designer of your group but then you get into this there's a whole world of people that are worse than you better than you the same as you yeah. that you can learn from and teach and and all that and it's yeah. really cool to finally like feel like you can um get proper feedback that isn't like yes. that's like as objective as it can be i guess it is yeah it's like we're and i think you're right like it's that realization that like you also are like you you have your own unique like mixture of background yeah. that is valuable you know like every single new designer that comes in or gets a mac somehow or they get photoshop or they get the hijack photoshop that's really important yeah. that it happens because otherwise you have these kids that like never learn or like never are able to become who they could be. Right. And it's so good to have all those insights of like, like, you know, we're, we're from completely different backgrounds and stuff. And yet we have a lot of common ground mm -hmm. because we do, <laughs> we all right. do. And, uh, and it's just nice to have that sense of, I'm not, but it's not just me that's feeling this, or it's not just me that's going through this. We've all gone through versions of it. Right. Um, and it's only with that social, online social as well, um, communication that we're all like, oh shit, okay, we've all gone through this kind of same stuff. Yeah. And that's when the group things happen. You know, I think like this NFT space, which is kind of still new it's ever evolving and it wouldn't have evolved as much if like my feed is constantly just other designers and artists now, like, it's, mm -hmm. like, and it's how it should have always been, but we won for yeah. some reason. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's funny. You were talking about like, uh, everyone's like origin and for my, uh, class or whatever age of people you yeah. want to call it, it was like a rite of passage to, um, download a torrent of CS6 Photoshop, you know? And that's yeah. the one thing I feel like with the creative cloud, I don't know if it's the same anymore. People probably aren't able yeah. to, to w wiggle their way around it. <laughs> nah, nah. I mean, now I get, but that's the thing. It's a lot of it's like classism as well, man. Like, and they're catering to like businesses. Cause like we're an agency, you can afford the 50 quid a month per person. I um, creative cloud that it is, mm -hmm. but like, if you're a kid starting up, you've got no chance. Right. I think Adobe, especially, especially like if they just realized if they just gave people even just like a decent trial period or like wavered costs for like a year or somehow they'd realize that it had much better impact for everyone. Cause it's yeah, if you're under 18, you should get the, the creative cloud should be like free until you're 18. Honestly, yeah, that would be yeah. a good system to implement. And it's been the same over here, like where it's like, they want people to work remotely and home, but a lot of people just don't have Wi-Fi or like they don't have a, a computer they can do their homework on because you know, mm -hmm. they've got five siblings. Like, yeah. And it's that type of shit where it's like, you're assuming everyone's on the same page when we're not. Um, right. And that's why it's important that everyone has access to the same things. Um, yes, don't condone ripping Adobe off, but also do. Um, yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah this isn't of, advice. This is just a story. <laughs> yeah. Hypothetically speaking, yeah. you know, you're like, <laughs> yeah. Ah, that's it, man. Like, and I think 
it only benefits everyone. You know, like we were saying about like fees and not realizing that we're undercharging and that it, then you're right, it, it's twofold. It hurts everyone because then everyone's then crunched because they assume everyone can get stuff for 50 quid when they can't. The problem with undercharging too is one thing, my mantra I realized is no matter the situation, the bad feeling of giving someone a proper quote and them hmm. saying, I don't have enough money for it and you being disappointed that you don't get to work on that project is never mm. going to feel as bad as taking on a project for $200 yes. that should have cost yeah. 2000 and now you're deep in the shit of two weeks worth of work and revisions. You yes. Know? Oh my God. Yeah, that's it. And that's why I think we touched on it before that that's why like paperwork and um, like having deliverables and signs um, like middle ground is so important mm. because at the end of the day, it, you are it is a business it's a business thing yes yes we're creative but you have to be equally creative and business-like if one overtakes the other you essentially and uh, you can't you don't function but if you're too yeah. creative and not business-like you lose money or you undercharge and you devalue yourself if you're too business-like you're then not creative enough to then get the business um yeah, even with why, like, like if you had someone you know, make sure you do that stuff. Like, don't think that yeah. just because you know this person or they're like your friend yeah. or whatever, still do a contract. You know, it's important. No, yeah, especially like if you're doing stuff for people you know, um, I try not to, but I make sure. And if I do, it has to be on like my terms, like when I'm free or if I have the capacity, because a lot of times I just don't. Like, I can sometimes go like two, three weeks not being able to do my own stuff. Mm hmm um so it has to be slotted in and you have to it's a priority thing you know like yeah it's, there's stuff that pays your bills and there's all the stuff you can do like for fun hopefully yeah. and it's about prioritizing what comes first i always um, get anxiety about like if i don't if i say no to this project they'll never contact me again for a future project <laughs> yeah. you know oh uh, yeah well but then it's again it's like it's also like a self-respect thing i guess where you're like you know you have to have limits or you have to have you know um you have to know your own how like, much your time's worth and more. everything and how much yeah, like yeah. your uh bandwidth or whatever mental bandwidth yeah exactly because no one else is gonna know and uh and if you know yourself you can at least be resilient in the fact that if something doesn't happen or if a quote turns into nothing yeah you know it was accurate and you know it was good yeah um and there's nothing like that sense of value in yourself which is very important to have right um and yeah, you're right. Like, yes, it does suck that you, some people say no because it's like too expensive. But you then could have another inquiry that is right. And if you always took the ones, and like you said, if you then do churning out something that's too grand, that it's you might 200. be too busy for the good one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, would you um, rather do exactly five right. five uh, undervalued projects or deny four, and then the fifth one is going to pay the same amount as all the other ones? You know. Yeah, and if 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 being freelancers taught me anything is that you never really know. I mean, in life as well, get a bit deep here, but like you never really know what's around the corner, and you know, a lot of the times you just you have to you're reacting to things, mm -hmm. and you just have to be the best prepared because you're always going to be reacting to stuff, and you don't know what one conversation could be like. You know, that's why it's, it is so important to connect with people and yeah. And to not dismiss someone just because they've got like a weird username or something like, you know, like, you know, because like I said, you, you can get a, quite a handful of DMs, but to, to treat everyone with the same amount of respect because they deserve it. Like mm -hmm. you don't know who's behind that profile. You don't know who that person is. You're only closing a door that's already open. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just how you should treat it, really. Um, yeah. yeah, that's why I've been trying to be more uh, personal and approachable online, even though. I don't know. Something's just weird about Instagram is I feel way more it's like I'll record this podcast. I'll record endless amounts of YouTube videos, talking in yeah. front of the camera, looking into the camera, exposing like my life. But I feel yeah. that to me is easier than taking a selfie. That's still, you know, like I, th th there's this I weird that feeling one. that I feel like if I just take a picture, it, someone's thinking, okay bro we get it like that's your face like yeah. we don't need to see it you know yeah, yeah. i feel that oh man i i think i i feel in that one i think only recently i'm I, i'm picking away at that i've taken a lot more photos of myself mm -hmm. um just feeling a bit more like 
but that this is me and you're right like there is that bit of disconnect sometimes where you're like you can record these like hour-long podcasts but then taking a photo of yourself is just another this is like a step too far like what <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that is it and then you know uh, hopefully you get out of that man because like honestly right. it's, it's kind of yeah it's it's nice because you you're right there is that kind of disconnect and i think it's tone as well you know like i feel like platform, especially social media platforms is they have different roles don't they um twitter is very much just no filter do kind of whatever you want yeah it's like a wild um, west instagram. out there yeah oh, but in a nice way yeah uh, and like whereas instagram is a little bit more you can kind of be it but it's still got to be purposeful um and then other platforms like behance is that's the most polished you're ever going to get behance it's like oh yeah you know there's all these platforms man um and then you have discord which is like the undertone of it all or like whatsapp in someone the behind the scenes kind of that's that's what's holding it all together all those chats and things you know the amount of people that like and for the creatives and designers where we're like like what hashtags work better or like yeah, like how does your red look good? Or like, why does it look all crisp? And I'm like, well, I'll just do this. And yeah, well, do people ask you about that a lot? Because like red is yeah. like, man, Instagram fucks red <laughs> shit up. It does, red. yeah. I learned, I learned it very hard. Like my first, that the clumsy, the clumsy illustration was like the first one. And I remember posting that, it just came out brown. And I was like, what? Like, what? Yeah. And that's why I chose this particular hex code that I use is because it doesn't ever fuck up. Right. <laughs> it's consistent. Goes brown. It's very consistent. And for some reason, when it gets, I don't know why, the compression, you're right, kills everyone. Um, it just does something to reds uh, yeah. and oranges as well. I feel they're very similar vein. Um, and purples, you can't really get a pop in purple that much. Mm-hmm. Um, it just kills it for some reason. And you'd think an image-based platform would sort out the image base, and yet Twitter's already a step ahead of them with these 4K images loading, which are just awesome. Yeah. Uh, one interesting thing is, uh, the, speaking of the Twitter thing, uh, everyone's hmm. very excited about that, but I saw an excellent counter argument of saying, be careful with that, because now you lose the ability to refrain from posting the highest version of something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I mean, I've <laughs> like NFT. I've did, you're buying the high JPEG, but yeah. what if you already posted the high JPEG? Yeah, uh, people are gonna value it even less, you know. Yeah, that is it, man. I, I'm. I mean, I've definitely been hit with that whole screenshot, use it kind of thing. I mean, I freak. You know, the in our hands, like graphic, man. Like the amount of times you can just reverse, reverse image search that, and there's like thousands. Really. And all it was is that. I would, I made that mistake of like ha- give, having the high res one out there and then boom, it's on Pinterest, then it gets used and whatever. Um, but there are simple things like you can, uh, I've got it on my site where you can't right click on the images. Yeah, I have that as well. Um, stuff like that. I kind of tried to do it with just posting videos, like because then mm. you can't screenshot videos. It'll like, look like, like kind of weird maybe. Yeah. yeah. So but again, I think it's, it's just one of those things where it unfortunately it's so it's a it's an attitude thing rather than a um something we can solve now it's one of those things where and i i think nfts are one of those steps towards that where it's the realization that that is artwork and it's been crafted and it's been created by someone mm-hmm. that yes you can screenshot it but it doesn't mean anything i think and i think memes have essentially garnered that for the average person where they think oh i can just save that and that's mm-hmm. mine um i've got the tangible image to use forever now um well it's like, like when say, people say that argument um uh it's easier to differentiate real from fake when you have like a let's say a real jackson pollock right someone yeah. could say i mean you could just get that you can get that made again for a couple hundred bucks or you can get that printed but it's not the same you know and that's how the the nft shit should be looked at you know it it is the same but it's all just value that we made up anyway so it's not like i mean you know i I think a good example of that is like you know like like cards you could print a fake Yu-Gi-Oh card and it looks the same like the only we put value on stuff right same when you resell like sneakers and stuff like the thing itself costs like 40 quid or not even that but the scarcity and the hype around it and people's attitudes because it might be a particular colorway 
we give value to things. And I think that's where we've, I think we've tapped in it with, with NFTs is that there's that perception of value that you can't replicate. It only happens like once, doesn't it? You right. know, yes, you can copy, duplicate, screenshot. It isn't the same. And subconsciously, you know, it's not the same. You know, you screenshotted it. You know, it's not the original one. And that's yeah. why we buy prints and, and, and now NFTs or we buy merch or we buy the physical thing because and the NFTs is like the sim, symbio of that online where you could have a physical sneaker or you could have the rotating artwork of it as an mm -hmm. NFT. They're same vein. You can choose either. You, you, there's both on option. And I think it's only a good thing, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like speaking of, I mean, uh, you know, no, go ahead. Stuff. Yeah. I was going to say, like, like, you know, there's, there's that sense that it exists, right? You mm -hmm. know, that like it's not just an idea that someone's right. had, that it's a tangible asset. And mm -hmm. I think that's what it is going forward. And we've just changed the definition of that a little bit. Right. You know? It broadened it in a way. Mm. What, um, speaking of that, What's going on with these shoes? Tell me, uh, let's hear about the Converse. Oh, Are yeah. they coming out like tomorrow? Yeah, so like, They'll be out by the time yeah. this is out, but hopefully yeah, someone what, can, yeah, you can still get the, them. You can still get them, but. Yeah, so basically, well, when will, the, well, when will this be out? This right? won't be out for like, uh, there's one more before it. So like right. like uh, 11, four, or 11 days from now or whatever. So they might be Ooh. all sold out. Knowing you, yeah. Well, so the, basically, it's a two-week pre-order window. Okay. Um, so, ba and they're all handmade to order. So, if you can make um, it in there, yeah, try. you could. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent. Try all the cool content will be out by now because we had a lot of some delays and things. But basically, I and mean, that was just like, again, that was another online thing, man. Like I did the mock-up as like a joke for Halloween as part of the series. Was that and the then, um, old school poster like one? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. like. And I was like, oh, that would be cool to make one day, wouldn't it? And then a year later, when I've done it, um, Rose come uh, posting me, like, hey, man, I do like sneakers and stuff. I'm in like US and Canada. Like, I can make those. I was like, uh, okay. Yeah. And I was like, I was sold on just the fact that you said you could make those. Um, and yeah, um, bless him. Like, he's been like working his socks off trying to source stuff. Um, we've been like having so many calls and like, trying to source things but yeah it's like it's not an official club i think i have to say this like yeah because i was wondering get... the rules with that because you know that all that shit yeah. that happened recently with like oh, little nas man. and the mischief it's stuff just silly. like ugh, like you you've bought the shoe so you can do anything you want with it like you know like yeah. if you go on depop there's so many air force one customs it's the same premise <laughs> yeah you know I mean? like, like every yeah. fucking person sells like vape printed oh. uh air force oh, ones yeah so and you're you're making them then you're 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 sourcing them with uh who who's yeah. the rose no, rose rose not name rose that name is his handle um <laughs> yeah and uh basically yeah just kind of getting them <laughs> completely kitting them out and you'll get a lot of people don't know this yet and i guess they will by this time comes out but basically you get like spare laces it will come in like a coffin shoe box it's not the oh, typical spare shape it's a coffin shape it's in like a body bag as well that you have to unzip. Um, oh, yeah. And you'll get like a print of the poster as well. Um, you were discussing other stuff, but in the end, it just came to the, the core thing of the shoes. I think most people sold just purely on the shoes, but a lot of people haven't seen the box as of now, but they will do. So it's a classic think, chuck, basically, right? And then with yeah. um, with a custom circular label and a custom, yeah. like this, the foot embroidery, it, right? Yeah, it is. And it's going to be all like washed and like, peeled back and like weathered a bit um kind of gray really nice. almost right like a fade yeah 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 um so it's going to be really cool i mean and i hopefully this will be the first of many i mean i'd hope to like i've always wanted to have more kind of bespoke hands-on shit like i yeah. still haven't really gotten around to doing my own like set of clothing like like dan's down and doron's down like mm -hmm. i'd love to get eventually to that point where i can yeah. do it myself i've done it in so, the past but it was shit so I, it's like you know it was <laughs> what like what did you do man? was it like it was just high school shit, shit screen printing and stuff yeah, yeah 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 did you enjoy it though i mean screen printing yeah awesome. it was fun it was fun oh. but looking at it i'm like i can't believe this shit will fucking even <laughs> sold eddie you know <laughs> you left that the heat set on a little bit quicker yeah. Or, yeah you ever look at you know you ever look at your stuff and i talked about this with the past 
podcast um, is like, man, like it's a good problem, but you really do get better every fucking year, oh, you know? Yeah. Like that's good. Yeah. And yeah, you're right. Yes. It's cringy. Yes. Like, you know, I mean, I used to irk me now that all my stuff's outlined. Right. But I still wouldn't line up. There'd be like bits where the line would like poke through mm-hmm. and I'm like, what? Why would you, why would you not just correct that? Yeah. And that's exactly it. Like over time you go, no, right. And, that, and you have all these rules, you know, uh-huh. like this can't be that. And, it's about refinement and it just shows you actual growth. And I think a lot of times we don't acknowledge it ourselves, right? We get so into making all the time that we need to sometimes take a step back and go, oh, whoa, this year was sick. Like I had all these good things yeah, happen. Yeah. I learned so much. That is so, it is, I'd say, the most valuable thing you could ever do. Because if you never do that, you will never see that improvement. Mm-hmm. And then you get imposter syndrome and you get a sense that like, everyone's better than you and you're not progressing. It's very important to have that tap on the back from other people as well, but also yourself. You need that yeah. realization that from within that you're like, oh, yeah, look at me then and now. And it's, sometimes it's good to look back or it, it's essential to look back, really. Yeah, of, I have a problem and, um, like figuring out sometimes when I try to think of ideas for a um, YouTube or a reel, like some kind of tutorial. It's hard Mm. to remember what you like. You just feel like you've always known everything, you know? Yeah. Like sometimes I do stuff for my like non-design friends that are working in a design program. Let's say like, like my uh, guy that helps me produce this Vince, he'll ask Mm. me a question about Illustrator because he's working on like a a pitch deck for like a Uh multimedia project. Right. And he'll say, yeah, how do you like do like the guides and i'm just like uh, i didn't know that was a thing people didn't know you know because yeah, your whole yeah. life you've been doing like the command colon hotkey or yes. whatever you know oh my god yeah yeah and you're like oh no got it. right so you got the menu yeah <laughs> yeah it's yeah, hard like, to think like, of yourself as a beginner you know yeah i know or like you get like i mean i haven't got but you get um, the, the shortcuts in your keyboard or something yeah like and you never you never need them again um yeah that's exactly it but like yeah you're right like sometimes you, you you forget yourself how far you've come and i think it, it's essential that you kind of have that taking your head out your own kind of world for a bit and mm. actually self-evaluate because it's very important isn't it you know yeah because you were i remember i started so my my first day of design was as an apprentice um august 20 august 17th 2015 that was my first day as a designer yeah um and i get i literally sat down i was like right Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, what's that? I was, what's in there? InDesign, what's that? Yeah. And there's also Quark as well, I had to learn that. Uh, and I was like, okay. And then using it a bit, having to do with these PDFs and things. And then now, boom, I know all these little, you know, having, oh, like, Harry, how do you make all the page? Yeah, you just know it. And I think it's that level of, wow. That's what's crazy about InDesign is I learned it in school and I did a uh, hand bound book. So I had to set up all the pages and then set it up to where the order had to be like, it wasn't one, two, three, four, five, because they fold and it's like one, four, seven, whatever. And learning all that made me realize like self-taught designers, even though some of them could be way better than me at Photoshop, Illustrator, people don't ever really seek out how to use InDesign, you know, but being Uh, forced uh, to use it has been helpful for like, I love it for like resume and large PDF documents and stuff. It's really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. InDesign's, I, cause I love like printed stuff. Like that was always my kind of thing. Um, knowing like how to do artwork things. And that was always kind of the thing I love doing. Cause it's like the last thing that you do as a designer and it gets sent off and made that's it yeah um i used to love that like oh, okay so you've got to have all the color codes you've got to convert the color profiles and make sure the bleed and crop marks and like registration marks are all there margins um, everything like i mean books are like my kind of um my guilty pleasure because i just love the whole process of doing the book i mean i did a book with like 30 seconds to mars which is um should get mine soon it's a massive coffee table book full of images book? and stuff yeah, big photo book. It's all from like their America tour. Yeah. And um, it was awesome. Like, because the process of it is really nice. You know, you, you have like going through the pages, the page count. Like, it's just really cool. It's just a cool process. And yeah, InDesign is like my my thing. Yeah. My favorite thing about InDesign is the 
uh, I think it's W on the hotkey or it might be mm. where you get the like plain view. Yes, like I wish yeah. that worked, but that way in oh. Illustrator, you know? <laughs> no, yeah. Oh, or like, yeah, like outline preview and like yeah. pixel preview and overprint. Yeah. Look at this. Oh. I'll show you. If you like books, I'll show you something cool. This is like a boundless book. So let me see if I can. It Whoa. opens up like this, right? Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Oh, whoa. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, you, it's kind of a pain in the ass to look at, but it's pretty nah, fucking yeah. cool. And it's like a very um, designed like memoir thing of like all these old scans nah, and stuff. Yeah. When the, the coolest thing about this book is I actually had to buy it for a class, like non-design yeah. class. It was like a, a uh, writing, like general education class. And the guy yeah. was just dope. Like our textbooks were all just really cool, like comic things and like nice. weird short stories and stuff. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I could go on about, I'm literally, um, you know, like, you know, in like American Psycho where Patrick Bateman's like, that subtle like off-white color eggshell white like, or whatever that's me that is yeah. me like i have so many sample books like at home and stuff where i'm like like they've made like wood into paper even though it is wood like yeah or they've done you know like they've it's all recycled or there's like it's like leather almost yeah yeah that's me all over that. <laughs> like, like i have yeah. one of those little i don't know where it is right now but the pantone like little book yes and because i got it from my work because we at my job I work for my full-time job is like a, uh, I do a lot of packaging and stuff for the place I work oh, at. Cool. So I have to do yeah. like the color proofing and whatnot. And it's yeah. crazy, man. Like looking at those things cost like fucking $300 oh or some God, shit. Yeah, dude. And you only have like paper. two of them. Yeah. Like they're yeah. like, oh, we can And then have... they're like, make sure you get a new one in eight months or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. That's so good though. So I'm not just sticking through. I mean, I think that's how I discovered a lot of like, you like, I was like, wait, you can get like like a red that looks good that's not mm -hmm. crap and the flicking through like i mean like 32c mag they're named after like the 32c color yeah. like chart have and you ever like, gotten oh, the pantone of your your red like figured out uh yeah kind yeah of. It, kind of it depends on what it's on mm -hmm. but it's just bright red c yeah like, like that's it. Oh, it already has its own thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then I know the CMYK breakdown, which is like, wait, can I? Should I say it? No. Um, yeah, it's um <laughs> top secret. Wait, do I? Do I know it? It's like eighty four uh, M eighty five Y ninety. So then there's more paper showing through, so it's like brighter, mm -hmm. and that's how it looks. That's like cool. I got some um, tape done from Sticker Mule, like recycled tape, and I, and it came out really nice actually. Oh, it's um, just a plain solid. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was the breakdown. But yeah, like uh, this kind of cool. I mean, just I love all the color charts and things. It kind of you can go, whoa! Like how can they make this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Getting all these like fancy kind of neon grains or glitter or like metallic iridescent. Or yeah. Yeah. All right, let's see here. What uh, the last thing I want to ask you uh, is, because um, I know you, we spoke about it a bit already. You do a lot of, you're very transparent, and you like to talk a lot about um, navigating the your career as a designer and hmm. like the do's and don'ts. So, if you had yeah. to give yourself the, what's the most important advice you'd give yourself in 2015 when you're first starting cool. from now? Oh, there's a couple. Um, I uh, think well, I think the main one would be it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I've kind of recently um, had this approach where it's like uh, kind of doing stuff to like 80%. Um, yeah. Not as in like not trying, but it doesn't have to be like so like in depth or so detail orientated that you, you miss the point of why it's happening. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's where I got, like, it got personal. I think, I think I crossed the line too much, too many times where I was so invested in it being perfect that it ended up not being perfect anyway. Um, yeah. so yeah, like, I think I'd say to myself, like, look, like 
that's it's fine. Like you don't need to overdo it. I think I overdid things a lot. When a lot of things, like if you're trying to overdo 10 things, all 10 of them are going to be crap. Whereas nine out of 10 of them, you don't need to overdo, but there's going to be that one that you can then pull it out from nowhere. And I think I've learned that as I've gotten older, where just apply, you can really then apply yourself to the projects that mean, you know, or the, the certain tasks that, are, that need that level of detail. Because most of them don't, they don't need yeah. that pulling your soul into it. Only a couple do, because they're the ones that then really flourish. Because you can't, you'll end up with no soul if you put it into all of them. Um, but yeah, no, and it sounds, you know, selfish or harsh, but that is the reality. You can't apply yourself 110% all the time because there'll be nothing of you left. And I think I learned that from the other day posted, you know, six to nine months doing every day and then six months not doing anything. You know, it was kind of a burnout. You, it, it, it can seriously cripple you. Um, so yeah, that'll be that'll be it. Like it doesn't have to be exactly that all yeah. the time. That's good. Yeah. And it's like you only, it's almost looking at it like you have uh, 10 ounces of like soul liquid, right? And yeah. you, wanna, and you yeah. have 10 projects Yeah. You know, or you got to put maybe 0. 0.5, 0. 0.5, whatever. And then the yeah. other three into one really important thing, you know? Yeah. The guest I had on before he said, uh, name was Timmy. Um, he said, uh, done is better than perfect. That's like this mm, yeah. little thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's because uh, yeah, exactly. Because there'd be loads of times where I just, you know, I only had like four hours to do something, and I'd spend eight, <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's like, why? Um, and the only and the only person that's losing out is you when you do that. Um, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, done is done is better than perfect. Yeah, yeah, that was great, man. Uh, good, <laughs> uh, good insight. Great way to end it and. I appreciate talking to you. One thing I want you to do before we head out, just uh, plug all your stuff, the Converse, yeah, uh, where you can get that, your socials, everything. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, well, firstly, man, thanks for being on this. Like, it's um, so nice to have like a, a, a creative to creative like conversation. It's nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, the yeah, Converse are out, you know, like the 5th of April and they'll still be out for a bit all pre-order. They'll be at Rose's site, but they'll all be linked up from my mailing list and everything. So people will know where that is. Um, I'm at Harry two underscores Vincent on everything for consistency. Um, and uh, www.harryvincent.com is my main portfolio. And uh, yeah, I, I try and be as active as ever. And uh, I always answer a DM. It may just take me two to three business days most times. But, um, <laughs> yeah, always, always up for a chat, always up for like, collaborate and stuff as well oh yeah cool yeah and if you want to hear a little bit more head over to the patreon we're going to do a little q a with uh, harry uh little questions from the community and whatnot check that out uh if you just uh just can't get enough of us talking you know you need a little <laughs> bit more but um anyway that was really cool and appreciate <laughs> finally sitting down with you you know uh, screen yeah, to screen awesome. or whatever you want to call yeah. it and That's been um, awesome, man. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Yeah, see you guys.